racism is a is a global and vague term. Sorry, but what why was, do you what, put it? Why did why would you possibly do that? What did that yeah. mean? Because I said it was a global and vague no, no, term. No, no, the inverted commas is it's not a real thing. What did? No, the, that isn't what it meant. Well, what did it mean then? Explain. It meant that it's indicative indicative of low resolution thinking. What you are about to see is a classic example of Jordan Peterson's mastery over words. In the midst of a high stakes debate with the BBC panel. Jordan Peterson tackled an array of contentious topics, among them the ever-polarizing subject of racism. His approach to this sensitive issue sheds light not just on his perspective, but also on the broader discourse surrounding race relations today. With the revelations from crickets Azim Rafiq and footballers still taking the knee, what does this say about racism as a continuing undercurrent in present-day Britain? I think the same point I made earlier applies, is that to leap, things need to be particularized rather than generalized as, as a general rule, let's say. And so this cricket player was facing racism by his own account. The question is who, when, what exactly? Because otherwise it degenerates into something like a discussion of structural racism. And when it becomes abstracted up to that level, first of all, that pits group against group, which I think is entirely counterproductive. And it actually doesn't address the issue. You know, racism is a, is a global and vague term. Sorry, but what was, why, do you what, put what, why, did, why would you possibly do that? What did that yeah. mean? Because I said it was a global and vague no, no, the, term. No, the, the inverted commas is it's not a real thing. What did, no, what, that isn't what it meant. Well, what did it mean then? Explain. It meant that it's indicative, indicative of low resolution thinking. And these, what, what, and what I mean by it? that is, we use all these terms frequently in discussions like this that are he, he was containers of, of, di of, of undifferentiated he content. He was repeatedly called abusive terms directly linked to his ethnicity. By who? By not just one, but repeated members of the Yorkshire Cricket Club. He's okay, had people well then, contacted then, him. If then it they, walks like a tuck, duck, Jordan, then it talks they, like no, a duck, I'm not it's a duck, it's I, racism. <laughs> I'm not denying his experience. Right. What I asked was exactly who and when, and you just answered that yes. question. So I would say those specific people should be held specifically to account for their actions before any movement up the abstraction hierarchy to a discussion of something like structural racism, which well, I don't think is helpful. Well, he has talked about institutional racism in yeah. cricket. Mm -hmm. He says that's what he's experienced as a term, institutional racism. Right, I know, I know. And I, like I said, I, I believe that abstracting up the problem to that level of analysis does no good because it pits groups against groups. I think it exacerbates the problem. The concept of structural racism. It's too imprecise. It doesn't address the issue. Now that doesn't mean, that does not mean racism does not exist. That is not what I'm saying in the least. Peterson's examination of racism isn't confined to overt acts of discrimination or prejudice. Rather, he delves into the complex interplay between individual responsibility and societal structures. He argues against the oversimplification of attributing all disparities and conflicts to racism, suggesting that such a viewpoint diminishes the multifaceted nature of societal issues and individual agency. One of Peterson's key arguments revolves around the danger of reducing the narrative to a single dimension where racism is seen as the root cause of all societal ills. While acknowledging the undeniable existence and impact of racism, Peterson cautions against its use as a universal explanation for every form of inequality. This perspective invites a more nuanced analysis of the issues at hand encouraging a consideration of other factors that may contribute to disparities, such as socioeconomic status, educational opportunities, and community support systems. Mm -hmm. Peterson's stance aligns with a growing body of research suggesting that effective solutions to racial disparities require a multifaceted approach. For instance, a study published in the Journal of Economic Perspectives highlights the complexity of addressing racial inequality, pointing out that policies solely focused on anti-discrimination may not be sufficient to eliminate disparities. Instead, the study suggests that a combination of strategies addressing various aspects of inequality is necessary for meaningful progress. Furthermore, Peterson challenges the narrative that views all disparities through the lens of oppression and victimhood. He advocates for empowering individuals with the notion of personal responsibility and the capacity to overcome adversity. This perspective resonates with the ideas of scholars like Thomas Sowell, who argues that a focus on self-empowerment and personal agency has historically been a key driver in overcoming racial barriers.